Hi, I'm Will Tracy, and I'm part of uh, Grand River Band of Brothers. Now, I want to talk to you today about, uh, about loneliness, and it's probably a good topic with COVID-19 and all that. Uh, a lot of people in isolation and feeling loneliness. But to talk about loneliness, I want to share a couple stories from, from my growing up. Uh, my first story is from when I was in elementary school in Quebec. Uh, I was born there and lived there until I was 13. And I remember my grade 7 class being out on the, the playground with my class and uh, of course our class being the last class we uh, got to be out a little later than the other kids and so we're out there by ourselves just our class and we're playing this game where the guys are trying to snow the girls the girls are trying to snow the guys and uh, so of course I'm running up to the girls to, to push them into the snow but every time I would run up to them they would have this reaction where it was like a, don't you dare touch me kind of thing right and one girl even threatened to hit me and after this happened for the third time I was beginning to feel this deep sense of rejection and uh, so I walked away from my class um, I went off into the corner of the schoolyard by myself and when I looked back nobody had followed me in fact it seemed like no one had even noticed that I was gone so it, I really felt like nobody cared. Now, my second story, again, is uh, elementary school years. I got home from school one day, and uh, we lived out in the, in the middle of nowhere, really. Like, there was forest all around. And I remember walking into the woods near my house where there was this big ledge and standing there and contemplating running away because I felt that nobody loved me. No one really cared about me. That nobody would even miss me if I was gone. So fast forward again a few years uh, in high school and I still feeling this sense of loneliness. You know I've garnered a few friends in school and uh, of course my church had a youth group and I had friends there but uh, you know even at a youth rally with you know hundreds of kids around me and uh, my friends from my youth group being on either side of me, there were times where I would feel absolutely alone, like I would, even though I was in the middle of this large group. And I remember even drawing a picture one time in school, in class, and it was uh, you know me standing on this chunk of ground and there was a chasm around me. And uh, you know I drew, on the other side of the chasm was everybody else, and uh, I had even drew these little uh, you know, voice bubbles. and. Uh, on the other side of the chasm there was somebody yelling over to me hey how you doing uh, who's all over there with you and my little voice bubble saying back no one I am alone uh, you know fast forward again you know uh, met the love of my wife and you know I was thinking that uh, you know getting married that it would fix my feelings of loneliness because now I would have somebody who loved me and cared about me. But as we all know, you know, marriage is not perfect. It's made of people who are not perfect. And so, you know, we would have arguments and disagreements. And in those moments where, you know, there was difficulty, I would feel alone. And so the, the loneliness did not go away. Even though, you know, I had this lifelong partner there was still this feeling of disconnect, like I wasn't connecting with her, like I, I felt I should, and again, the sense of loneliness. And it wasn't until I went to this boot camp with uh, the Southwestern Ontario Band of Brothers, where we had this moment over the weekend at this boot camp, where we went entered a time of prayer, and we were able to go with uh, a couple of guys separated and have them pray with us and so we asked the question of God God what do you think of Will Tracy and God answered he put this scripture verse into my mind now the context of the verse is that Jesus has uh, gone into the water to be baptized by John the Baptist and he's coming up out of the water and the heavens open up and the spirit descends upon him like a dove and a voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. 
And in that moment, God was applying that verse to me. He was saying to me, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Now, I've been a Christian for a long time. I grew up in the church and I had lots of God moments where, you know, I felt God's love envelop me and so I knew that he loved me. But as time would go on and I would get further away from those moments, my own failures and struggles with, with sin would kind of make me feel that God was disappointed with me somehow. And so you know, I would still feel this distance between God and I, even though you know we had those moments where God said he loved me, I would feel alone. But in that moment, God was telling me my failures, my struggles, none of those things mattered. Because even in the midst of those, he was still pleased with me to call me his son. He still loved me. Now recently, it wasn't that I was dealing with moments of loneliness, but I was remembering my childhood and the loneliness that uh, I had gone through. And uh, I woke up and these thoughts were racing through my head and I feel that God had given this to me and so I got up and wrote it down. I want to share it with you. One day God said to me, you are my son, with you I am well pleased. You don't have to impress me. All you need to do is believe in me. I will take you as you are. I will walk with you even when the road is hard. And though the journey may be long, I will be there to make you strong. Now, one thing I've come to realize is that, you know, when I was struggling with loneliness and feelings of rejection and nobody cared, you know, the truth was that there was people who did love me and care about me. Most importantly, God being the one who loved and cared me the most. And, you know, Scripture says, or God says in Scripture, you know, I will never leave you or forsake you. But in those moments where I would, I would be overwhelmed with these feelings, it would alter my perception of reality. Because I would feel that nobody loved me or cared. But it was a lie. And so I've come to realize that, you know, I need to accept the truth, hold on to the truth, and reject that lie. Now something I haven't shared with you yet is that in my childhood there was something that happened, an event that happened in my life that caused a, a brokenness. And I didn't realize the extent of the brokenness until grade three when I, you know, I entered my class the, in September and realized that there was something about me that was different from the other kids. Something was broken. There was a disconnect. I couldn't make that connection. And I tried for years to, you know, try to fix that, you know, trying to impress the other kids, um, and none of it worked. I needed somebody to come in and, and fix me. And it's just like a, you know, a light switch and a light bulb, you know, you can flick the switch on. If the wire in between is broken, there's not going to be any electrical connection to make the light come on. You kind of need an electrician to come in and fix that. And I, I share this part because I want to talk about Grand River Band of Brothers and kind of what we are about. You know, we're a group of guys who have come together to go on a journey to find what is broken within us, what needs fixing, and bring it to the Master, who is Jesus. And it is Jesus who brings the healing, brings the, the fixing that we need, who makes us whole. And uh, I don't know where you are in your walk in life, I want you to know that you know there we are a group of guys who are open to others who want to come and walk this journey with us. And coming August 22nd, uh, it's only in a couple weeks, so it's not a lot of time. But we are going to be going on a, a canoe trip, and we're going to be taking some time to share. And if you're interested, join us. Check us out on our webpage, Grand River Brand of Brothers. Until then, God bless. May the Lord be with you.